In this video, I'm going to show you the basic differences between JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. And so to do that, I'm going to copy this JUnit 4 test and convert it into a JUnit 5 test. I'll call this JUnit 5 conversion. Now there will be a link to the source code in the video description and you'll find the JUnit 5 conversion as the JUnit 5 test. I just want to do this as an obvious thing. Now I have both JUnit 4 and JUnit 5 in the same project here. So JUnit 4 capabilities are being provided by the JUnit Vintage engine. So in my JUnit conversion test, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all these imports here. And then if I start changing this, now at test, is the same in JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. It's just we bring it in from a different package. So I'm using the at test from JUnit Jupyter.api.test and now I'm using the JUnit 5 version here. The assertions in JUnit 5 are not in the assert class, they're in the assertions class. So if I bring in the assertions class, then that's going to bring that in from JUnit Jupyter. So let me just change all of these to be assertions. There is a difference in the way that the assertions work with JUnit 5. In JUnit 4, when we add a message into our assertion, it's the message, then the expected value, then the actual value. JUnit 5, that's slightly reversed. In JUnit 5, the message is the last thing in the parameter list. So if I'm using messages in my assertions, then they go at the end. The expected and actual are the same way around in both JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. JUnit 5 doesn't at ignore tests if we want to disable them. Instead, it's disabled. So if I replace all my at ignores with disabled, then it's going to be JUnit 5. Now with the before class, before, at, after, and after class, at before is no longer at before, it is now at before each. So we say at before each test, then run this particular method. And similarly, at after each instead of at after, which kind of makes a little bit more sense. Then in at before class, it becomes at at before all. And similarly, at after all. With JUnit 5, we don't have the expected parameters in, in here against the test. What we have is an actual assertion. So I can say assertions dot assert throws. And this then says I am expecting a particular type of exception, which is going to be the IO exception dot class. And then what I do is I have a, an executable here. So it's going to be a Lambda expression. And in here, I basically put the code that I'm expecting to throw the exception. And that would check that the assertion is thrown. But what we have here is the benefit that it will return the actual exception. So if I put exception here, then that will be Alt Enter to create the exception. I can then do additional assertions on the exception itself, which is something we do is, is quite hard to do with JUnit 4. So if I now say assertions dot assert equals, and then take this text that we've thrown, and then I can just check that the exception dot get message is the one that we actually expected. And because the class is no longer actually throwing that exception, I can get rid of this. So now if I wanted to assert on a runtime exception, it would be exactly the same format as this. So I'm not actually going to um, convert this one in this video, but you'll see it in the final code. And that is pretty much all I need to do to convert uh, the most basic use of JUnit 4 into JUnit 5. So let me just run that test to make sure it works, which it does. So quick summary, we're now using the org.junit.jupyter.api um, package structure. 
And instead of at before class, we have at before all. Instead of at before, we have at before each. At test is the same. We don't at ignore anymore. We do at disabled. When our assertions have messages, the messages at the end, instead of statically importing or statically accessing from assert, we access from assertions. And we now have an actual assertion for checking for exceptions, which uses a lambda expression, put the code that throws the exception in the lambda expression, and then actually returns the exception, allowing us to do additional assertions on the exception itself. Now with at before all and at after all, these are still static methods, but they don't have to be. Watch what happens if I remove static here and run the test again, then JUnit will actually tell me what I need to put in here in the console error message because it is possible to have non-static at before all and at after all methods. So in here in the error message, it should tell me that currently it's not static, but if we want it to not be static, then I can put this annotation on the actual test class. So it's an at test instance of lifecycle per class. So then I'll import the lifecycle from the test instance. And now if I run this, I should get the tests running, but my at before all and at after all are no longer static methods. So we have a few more options with JUnit 5. I'll typically not use that and just have it running as static because I find that easier. And if I do want to ever switch back to JUnit 4, or make my code easier to read for people who know only JUnit 4, I can do that. But having the option is useful. So that's just a quick overview of the difference between JUnit 4 and JUnit 5, and you'll find links to the source code in the description.